Trying to confirm Jeff Sessions as the next Attorney General of the United States. The confirmation process for Senator Sessions was bumpy, both during his confirmation hearings and in debate on the Senate floor. Number two, Senate Republican John Cornyn stood by Senator Sessions throughout. He will do an outstanding job, I believe, in restoring the reputation of the Department of Justice. Democrats like John Tester of Montana said as Attorney General, Sessions must enforce the law as it is written, not as he says the president wishes it was. Mr. Sessions has proven time and time again that he does not fulfill these qualifications. The Attorney General is the nation's top law enforcement officer. Linda Kenyon, Washington. Democrat Joe Manchin of West Virginia crossed over the aisle to support Sessions. The Alabama senator was an early supporter of Donald Trump and one of the Senate's most conservative Republicans. People in the Northeast are preparing for a return of winter in a big way overnight as a powerful storm bears down on the area. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker says travel will be very risky on Thursday because of the winter storm. Both the morning and the evening commute and travel will be significantly impacted with snow cover rows, low visibility and possible whiteout conditions. We're asking folks to stay off the roads tomorrow and not travel unless absolutely necessary and to take public transportation whenever possible. The Pentagon says two U.S. airstrikes in Syria killed 11 al-Qaeda operatives, including one with ties to Osama bin Laden and other senior al-Qaeda leaders. A Pentagon spokesman says a single airstrike on February 3rd killed 10 operatives in a building used as an al-Qaeda meeting site. A second strike the following day is said to have killed an al-Qaeda operative, Abu Hani al-Masri. On Wall Street, they're down by 36 points. The Nasdaq rose eight. The S&P advanced one and a half. Oil up to 52.34 a barrel. More on these stories at townhall.com. I'm Robin Trzinski from the original Mattress Factory. If you're in the market for a new mattress, this is your wake-up call. Have you noticed something strange is happening? Suddenly, there are as many mattress stores as there are coffee shops. Why? What's really going on? Are they competitors or something else? Every holiday, a different sale. Every day, a different price. Do you think it is their intention to confuse us? My father, Ron, told me, trust your gut. It knows what your head hasn't figured out yet. At the Original Mattress Factory, we have never had a sale. Why? Well, let's just say the usual mattress sales don't fit our values. Our formula is comfort, support, and durability at a fair price. How? Your Original Mattress is designed here, made here, and only sold here. Looking for an honest price on a hand-built mattress? No reason to wait for a holiday to shop. Today works for us, too. The Original Mattress Factory. Thoughtfully made, honestly priced. OriginalMattress.com Tonight! My image isn't up there, but tonight... There's things out. There we go. Thank you, Jason. Pandora, the world of Avatar, is opening May 27, so this show will have no jokes come June. <laughs> Star Wars Land is opening in 2019. That gives Universal enough time to build 20 more movie theaters disguised as rides. <laughs> Rivers of Light performed last night for a bunch of moms. They were proud of the show just for trying. <laughs> 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 You've read WDW News today. Now you'll experience WDW News tonight. <laughs> Oh, live from Orlando, Florida. WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks News, presents WDW News Tonight. Now here are your hosts, Tom Corliss and Nick Cicero. Yay, make applause! Woo! Uh, don't worry, Michelle. Michelle is only off this week. She will be back. She's not gone again. I want to throw that out there. Uh, I thought your voice was just hoarse, maybe from the Super no. Bowl or something. That no, no, weird. Michelle, Michelle's poor little dog got attacked this morning. It did. Yeah, no. the dog is fine now. The dog is fine and healing. She's taking care of the dog. And they have removed all alligators from the area for the fences. Oh, oh, Jesus. Like two or two seconds into the show, and you've already offended 90% of the audience. Hope Universal does okay with those movie theaters without electricity. Yeah, right. There's a, there is a blackout at Universal right now, to which I responded, guys, it's not a blackout. They closed at seven. <laughs> seven? Yeah, seven. Wow. No one's not even in the script or anything for us. <laughs> I'm Tom Corliss. You're not. Nicholas Cicero over there. Jason Diffendahl in the control booth. Hey, howdy, hey. There he is. And uh, yeah, so blackout at Universal, uh, Rivers of Light happened. Maybe that should have, maybe they should have had a blackout at Animal Kingdom Ooh. on Monday, last night, whatever it was. I don't know. There's time, time. I 
don't understand how time works apparently and now the news news uh brought to you of course by t public like we said rivers of light and animal kingdom uh performed last night it happened but just for the disney social media moms attendees the latest version of the show is just 15 minutes long so in theory if they make it so short that you can't remember it you can't recall how bad it was <laughs> which might might be a good what's idea. a social media mom by the way is uh, that it's a mom thing? that uses social media so it could be any mom correct like if my mom tweeted once she could have been one of them um not to be controversial but uh these are typically people that disney knows they could invite and uh get good spin mm. uh so it's 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 one of those things they teach you in one of those fancy social media courses they're like this is this is guerrilla warfare social media strategy and you know, all that kind of garbage but anyway does it actually work <laughs> um, rivers of light uh has lost a ton of the original advertised effects there's uh, they lost uh four live performers more they used to have more than four live performers in the original idea that didn't happen uh they lost the 180 187 autonomous lantern floats and they also lost the ability to open in the spring of 2016 <laughs> <laughs> all those all those effects are gone from the show uh, the good news, Rivers of Light should formally debut this weekend. We think we're going to get an announcement tomorrow morning, maybe. Uh, but, of course, you could take that with a grain of salt. At this point, there have been more grains of salt taken over Rivers of Light stories that there's now nothing to put on your garbage steak at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> so that it's just going to taste like rubber. Anyway, that one sounded better in my head. It was a little wordy. It was good, though. It was a I was thinking of the steak at Planet Hollywood. We oh I'm I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I was like, mm, there's too many of those. The steak was like the best thing though. <laughs> right. The fillet was the best. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Pandora, the world of Avatar at Disney's Animal Kingdom will open on May 27th, uh -huh. 2017, which now raises this question. Nick, what the hell are we gonna do on this show? It's the You're just like a blur. <laughs> You're on the world's worst webcam. I told you. You forgot yes. your regular webcam. Yeah, I don't know where it went. I think I accidentally packed it and took it home last time. You're nice and smooth. Oh, look at that. What do you? What do you sip of the there? week? Oh, it's not out. It's soda. Planet Hollywood Observatory is the cup of the week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm scared. I am literally scared. On a side note, Disney is currently uh, testing projection mapping on the floating mountains of Pandora nightly at the park. What are they going to project onto there? Probably not the four minutes of Rivers of Light that are missing. <laughs> Probably won't be what's up there. They could. I mean, it's not being used. Anyway. Also, we leaked that Banshee image, which may or may not be the, the ride vehicle. That was exciting. Oh, that was a yeah. big story for us. I don't have any jokes about that. No, she's good. Uh, we also now have an opening date for Star Wars, the Star Wars themed lands at Hollywood Studios and Disneyland Park 2019. Today, 2019. Since the news broke, we have been yelled at for claiming that 2019 is not a date. Not that anyone making this claim would know what a date is. Wow. Get it? A yeah. Date, like with another person. Another person, yeah. Because they're, they're not social, normal social people. Anyway, <laughs> there goes half the audience. <laughs> that was a see relate style joke. That, one reminded that was me good. Last really. uh, Walt Disney World has extended the annual pass holder entry lines for their four theme parks into the spring of 2017, which is good because that's how long it's going to take you to get through them. Oh, so, Tell so me about it. Uh, have you ever went through one yet? Yeah, I have, but it's it's very rare. Yeah. Like one out of four, I'll find it's actually shorter. And it's always like a weird middle of the day where it's just people being slow at the other ones. Like maybe the other ones are too deep. I saw somebody said we should use them to support them and show them that we're appreciative of them giving into us. I'm not us in getting in that line if it's longer. It's right. idiotic. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not supporting something that's not working. You know, Nick, I never realized there were so many people who have annual passes. Yeah. Wait a second, actually, let me let me rephrase that. I never knew there were so many people who thought they had annual passes. Because <laughs> they, they don't know. They no. walk up and they're like, you don't have an annual pass. And they're like, oh, where do I go? And then they're like, just go. 
Forget it. Go in that short line. While many guests still enjoy traditional in-room dining, consumer preference for quick and casual dining is on the rise. And to address the evolving needs of guests beginning on February 7th. 7th? Yeah, 7th. And running through April 1st, a new option has been added to in-room dining programs called Express Express Fresh mm. because Fresh Express was taken <laughs> and will be piloted at Disney's Contemporary <laughs> Resort and Disney's Yacht Club Resort. The pilot will complement the existing in-room dining program by offering select quick quick and casual meal options to guests. The meals are presented at the guest room uh, door in disposable containers, and no setup is required. Ooh. Disney is stating that the meals will arrive within 30 minutes of ordering as the menus are comprised of quick-to-prepare items. However, those estimates are from the general contractor on Avatar Land, so, <laughs> so who, knows, who knows when your food will actually show up. May 27th. Uh, Express Fresh will be offered in the menu guides as a separate insert along with the traditional in-room dining option. There you go. James White, a hero of Super Bowl... Shut up. <laughs> Super Bowl 51 in Houston got to be in his own parade at the Magic Kingdom on Monday, continuing the 30-year tradition of the Patriots being the worst kind of people. That's not even a good joke. You just <laughs> want to make fun of the Patriots. That's a horrible joke. It doesn't even make sense. Oh... Park guests and NFL fans alike line the iconic street as uh, White smiled and waved from a float he shared with Mickey and Minnie Mouse and other characters. The float did have to stop a few times as the tires kept going flat for some reason. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Why did they keep deflating? I don't know. They were a little bit deflated. They yeah. were. The best headline I saw, though, was from an Atlanta paper that showed Matt Ryan and said deflated. That was the oh. best Super Bowl headline. The best. Yeah. So if you thought the people at the Magic Kingdom were, were typically hard to deal with Monday. Oh, that must have been insane. Everybody with a thick New England accent. Got a chance to go there. Yeah, we're going to Epcot. So good. Epcot. Anyway. By the way, Tom took out why why are what are we mad at this week? Because I'm not mad at anything. I'm just in, in jubilant. And what I would have been mad at is the Patriots winning yeah. the Super Bowl. So, so there you go. That's the uh cliff notes. Very good. The uh, live-action Beauty and the Beast Magic Band 2 was released recently at Walt Disney World. Man, everything is a remake or a sequel these days, even Magic Band. The same thing is that's probably the best joke I've ever written. I, I, I'm excited the for the prequels. The uh, prequel Magic good. Band? Yeah. Oh, the Phantom Bracelet. <laughs> Uh, the Starring Rolls Cafe at Hollywood Studios closed with little notice on Saturday. The small coffee and snack spot was beloved by fans, but became somewhat superfluous since the opening of the Trolley Car Cafe. Said fans, now there isn't even a ditch where I can buy croissants. They should charge less for tickets to this park. <laughs> no future plans for the space have been announced as of yet, but it's probably for Kebab. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> spot, too. It's, it's all it's oh, sunken yeah. in. Yeah. It in, right? It's really nice. Bar right next door. Yeah, there you go. Why does Tom's President Reagan keep disappearing? He's over. He's here. Here he is. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there he is. We just got to get him stuck back up on the wall. Someone asked where he was. I guess the people on the radio have no idea what we're talking about. But there's a cardboard cutout of Ronald Reagan here. And someone in the chat asked where he was. So I showed them where he was. A new pre-show has debuted at Beauty and the Beast live on stage where a father and daughter are brought on stage to dance to a song from the upcoming live-action film now through March. This is far less creepy than when it happens on OBT. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome to the uh, Get rid of that page. It's all garbage. <laughs> the Paddlefish uh, opened this week at Disney Springs with a huge VIP gala on Friday. First, I thought you were doing a... Uh... Kornak, the paddlefish. Soon, he's got to come back soon. Yes, I'm gonna invite him back. I love him. Uh, you know, Nick, at the v we went to this VIP gala. We did Friday, Nick. You know, I think I think I may have had a little too much to drink. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw they, there was even video of there was video of me jumping off the boat that made it uh, onto the news this week, and you even saw the drones show behind me. That was you. Yeah, I was wearing like a Captain EO outfit. <laughs> Get it. The Super Bowl, <laughs> but yeah, the the drones on the Super Bowl looked much better than the they're Disney the Springs. same drones, but they actually spent time like yeah. programming. Them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, the Planet Hollywood Observatory opened. 
Well, two thirds of it did, and Disney was like, "Okay, that's enough." <laughs> More on that later. And by that, I mean I'm still not done digesting. Oh, mayor of Flavortown. I'm not saying it was bad, but then I went to Tony's to get the taste out of my mouth. <laughs> Give me the chicken parm, please. <laughs> One chicken parm. Please. Uh, Disney introduced a brand new tour designed to provide guests with a chance to see all of the quintessential Magic Kingdom park attractions. The ultimate Disney classics VIP tour is all, co- or, or as I call it, paid fast pass. During the ultimate VIP tour, you'll be able to experience up to 10 of the most beloved attractions, including everything from Adventureland must-dos, Pirates of the Caribbean and the Jungle Cruise, to Fantasyland favorites such as Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, Dumbo, It's a Small World, Peter Pan's Flight, and more. And as part of the tour, guests can also meet Mickey Mouse. This tour does not include any attractions with height restrictions, so it's good for any age and useless for adults. If you're looking for the perfect introduction to the Magic Kingdom, this is the tour for you but that's really what it is right this is paid fast pass there's no kind other way it's to look at like it. i want to get through the magic kingdom as quickly as possible with a guide yeah that's it uh the ultimate tour is 199 plus tax or 74 dollars more than a disney after hours ticket and offered on tuesdays fridays and sundays uh walt disney world parking trams are going to be uh, soon be color-coded like the monorail also, like the monorails, there will always be something leaking on your seat, a smelly baby, <laughs> and car doors that don't open for some reason. It's going to be like the same, same kind of experience. Speaking of a monorail, Disney is doing something new called the Trivia Train, yes. where monorail cast members host spontaneous trivia contests with guests aboard the monorail. Guests will learn all sorts of things, like about the weather dome over Walt Disney World. And that Walt Disney said, if we can dream it, we can do it. <laughs> Guests can also win prizes on the trivia train. The main prize, you may actually get where you want to go. <laughs> the monorail. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, uh, someone in the chat, Nick, said that uh, once uh, Avatar's open, you're going to have to start playing something for Star Wars. I might have but to. But Star Wars yeah. was only announced. When, when was the expo? I guess no. it was 2015. You it? have lost. Was the expo 2015? Yeah, it was. Oh, so the land was announced over almost two years ago already. I know. So I guess it'll it'll be four years total. It'll it's still not the problem. seven years it, of Avatar. Seven. Yeah, seven. It won't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. No, it doesn't. Avatar was dragged out in a weird way. And less people care. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a different thing. I don't yeah. know. Someone else said, I love Nick's laugh. Maybe we should put you on the dating game. Hello, ladies. <laughs> there go. Uh, so the tours are like a better version of Lou Mangiello. What <laughs> no. is it, the better version of Lou Mangiello? <laughs> I believe that's actually what my bio says on the website. <laughs> Tom Corliss, a better version of Lou Mangiello. <laughs> anyway, moving on. The, uh, the good car- t-shirt. The car- <laughs> oh, my. Uh, the Kermit the Frog hot air <laughs> balloon was removed from Disney's Hollywood Studios recently as it could be seen from the Star Wars theme land being constructed. Inside of the basket was all of the remaining pastries from Star Wars <laughs> and the <laughs> Earful Tower. They all just floated they floated away. Where they've gone, who knows? Uh, a Princess and Prince character breakfast is coming to Trattoria Al Forno this spring. In related news, a Pirates of the Caribbean brunch is coming to the Coral Reef. No? Hey. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> both of them, the real thing and the joke, are both pretty stupid. <laughs> anyway. uh, rumor has it that Bob Chapek wants to gut and remodel Disney's Grand Floridian Resort to make it more like a modern luxury resort to compete with the Four Seasons. You know, I think we should gut and remodel Bob Chapek to make him more like a competent chairman of Parks and Resorts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's just, he pales in comparison to other chairs. Yes. This is, the, this is the rushed part of the jokes for the night. So these are not as good. It's good to have faith. We, yeah. we got a little bit left. Oh, these are bad. Get ready. Disney has filed a patent for a ride system that will react to a guest's emotions oh boy. and change the scenes around them and the movement of their ride vehicle based on their feelings. You know, the last time a ride was changed based on emotions, we got Journey into Imagination with Figment. <laughs> Yikes. 
you know, this is a fun fact. I'm going to bring this up because we have some time. Uh, Journey into Imagination with Figment is going to turn 15 years old on June 2nd. Yeah. Uh, a couple months after that, it will have eclipsed the original attraction's lifespan. So they, in my in my view, Disney has less than a year to get rid of that ride because if that ride outlives the original, I'm going to be really upset. Wow, yeah, it's getting close. I think 15 and a half years was the original because it was March, March of '83 to October of '98. So they have they have just a couple months after June to figure this out. But anyway. It has to come. It, it, I, it is coming. Talk- like obviously, it's going to right. be in whatever this plan this is for Epcot. Yeah. But I don't. I don't want to live in a world where that outlived the original. But, you know. On July third, Disney Quest will finally close to be replaced with the NBA Experience. You may remember this was originally announced along with Pandora: The World of Avatar. I'm blue, I'm it feels like it. Unlike Star Wars, this actually feels like it was announced. There's the Avatar joke of the week, which I know you're all going to miss. I don't know what that move was. You're all going to miss good. after May. Yeah, it's sad. We're going to lose it. Uh, you know, in actuality, though, it hasn't been that long. But a lot of Disney fans are upset and asking why Disney won't do something original instead. You know, like a chocolate factory. <laughs> And that's the news. Nick, who brings us the news? It's T-Public, of course. Don't forget to shop apparel and accessories for Disney fans through WDWNT.com and T-Public. Just go to WDWNT.com and click the T-Public link, the T-Public ad, to shop for hundreds of designs for T-shirts, phone cases, prints, and more, including the exclusive WD... Oh, my voice still isn't back from Sunday. <clears throat> Man. Uh, exclusive WDWNT and WDW News Tonight logo apparel, as well as the original creations such as Figaro the Cat, Seven, Make the Movie Ride Great Again, and more. Don't miss tonight's 20% off coupon code. Pretty cool here. It brings uh, the t-shirts down to just 14 bucks. Use the coupon code WDWNT20 off. Make the most of tonight's commercial break. Shop through our extensive collection. T Public, an official partner of WDW News Tonight. And we have a little something special on there tonight we as well. Uh, reminder on that code, the 20 is, is numerical. Oh, yeah, it's two, two, zero. Two, zero off. Yeah, I just want to clarify. I don't know why we would make it that long, but yeah, it, it's WDWNT, two, zero off. And it's only good tonight and tomorrow because T Public has their own sale starting on Friday. All right. Um, I want to talk about something real quick. Jason, can we, can we bring up the image here? Uh, this is really, really neat. Um, T Public uh, uh, reviewing how. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to anyone who bought a shirt last year, because we uh, all of our expert expectations were surpassed. But uh, T Public let us know they were they were blown away with with how many of you bought T shirts from us last year. So they approached us with a lot of great ideas this year. One of the things they wanted to do: limited edition T shirts. So we sat there and we thought about, we wanted to do our first one. We said we'd, we'd aim for February. And I thought about February is Valentine's Day. It's, it's for couples. I, I thought about those silly shirts they have at the parks. They've got the I'll be your Mickey, I'll be your Minnie. I thought about it like, yeah, those are great and all, but, but that's not who we are. Like, what would we want in those shirts? And it, it clearly had to be, I'll be your dream finder. And I'll be your figment. So these are available now. They're only available for a limited time. Um, I think it's another like 11 or 12 days. The countdown is there when you click through to the page. Uh, Jason, where are they? They're at WDWNT.com slash store. Is that right? Jason muted. No, he's on. Oh, he That's right. Yeah. WDWNT.com slash store. And you'll see the ad. And then there's two different links for the Dream Finder and the figment shirt. There you go. And they're, they're $18 each. And, uh, I can't believe the, the outpouring of support so far. We have sold way more than we ever thought we were going to. So thank you to everybody who already has these. Um, and based on the response, I think we're going to be doing more in the future, but, um, we're not going to pull a cheap one like Disney and put these out regularly after this is done. I want you guys to actually be a part of something special. So make sure you go over. You only have a couple days left. Make sure you go over and get these because after that period is over, I'm not going to put these out slightly different, change them up a little bit, or re-release them. 
different this is colors. Actually, no, it's not gonna happen. You can pick the colors if Ooh, you go yeah. through there. You can pick the colors. They also have them as sweatshirts and all kinds of other things there too. Fun um, fact: if you're if you're watching the video right now, Tom and I originally posed for this this photo. <laughs> it didn't come out as good. So look we, at these people that in no way guys. look like anyone who works here or anyone <laughs> or anyone that probably is going to purchase these shirts. I love that. Um, That's my favorite pose. T Bowen doesn't up. doesn't completely understand who we are, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, yeah, it's been a great response. Twelve days left to get these. You can pick colors. Also, they're really you know I I got to order them myself actually in the next couple of days. Um, you but also I, Tom should mention that um, just like Disney, the uh, the coupon code is not valid on limited edition merchandise. It sadly is not. T Public uh, is not able to do that. So the coupon code is not good on the limited edition shirts because it's a completely different agreement. I will say that um, it is good on everything else in our in our store. All the stuff in our store is is on sale with that coupon code tonight and tomorrow. Um, those shirts are going to be eighteen dollars. You got to go through the separate links. They're not even in the store. They're they're te se technically their own separate thing. So again, wdwnt.com slash store. Uh, you'll find the two individual links to both of those shirts. Uh, I think they're pretty awesome. Our artists did a fantastic job on them, and we're really excited about the response. And we're going to keep doing uh, more of these. Maybe we'll celebrate some of the attraction anniversaries coming up this year. Some other fun stuff like that. But there you go. Our first ever. Limited release t-shirt. Celebrate Epcot Center's perfect pair and your perfect pair uh, with these shirts. And just FYI, I'm buying it, buying the Dreamfinder tee. So if a lucky lady <laughs> out there wants to pick up the figment and message me, sure, go ahead. Or maybe I should pick up both and, and hedge my bet. You know, just a lot of, we've sold more know. figments than Dreamfinder. So there are people that Ooh. just have one of them. So I got to wear the other one and go find the match. It's it's interesting a connection. Yeah. It's an interesting game for Nick to play. Speaking of interesting games to play. Nick, yes. WDWNT, the pyramid. Yes. We're going to try something a little new tonight. We're going to have Tom and I uh, reading the clues for you. Uh, we want you guys to read the clues to each other. So we definitely want to hook up a couple teams out there. You can't know the other person. We're going to go on an honor system. But I want to uh, I have you guys... Uh, call us right now, 407-774-8255. That's 407-774-8255. You can get in on the, the pyramid tonight. It's all DCA-based. DCA is celebrating its 16th birthday. It's California Adventure, uh, 16 years old today, so we yeah. want to do a little something. So the game is all California Adventure so, yeah. themed. So we're going to pair you guys up. The team that does the best will win tonight. So, uh, again, uh, we need a few contestants here. 407-774-8255, the number. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now. 800-648-9175. 800-648-9175. 800-648-9175. That's 800-648-9175. Don't miss the old Florida Outdoor Festival featuring the Barbecue Blast. 
Friday night and Saturday at the Northwest Recreation Complex in Apopka. Featuring concerts, fireworks, a huge car show, the Florida State Barbecue Championship, and more. All absolutely free. Yup, free. Check out the Best State Competition Friday night, Jill's Cash Box on the Amphitheater Stage, and huge fireworks show. Then Saturday, barbecue teams from across the country compete for the State Barbecue Championship. Plus, you can rev it up with the biggest classic car show ever. Lots of family fun things to do. Plus, after a day filled with cars, barbecue, and family fun, the Amphitheater Stage heats up with two fantastic country stars, hit maker Dave Nail and the always great Rodney Atkins. I've been watching. All free. Yeah, free. The pay for parking. Some of the kids' rides require a wristband, but admission is free. Go online to OldFloridaOutdoorFestival.com for a schedule of events. The Old Florida Outdoor Festival featuring the Barbecue Blast Friday night and Saturday at the Northwest Recreation Complex. 3710 Jason Dwelly Parkway. Presented by the City of Apopka. Sponsored by this Salem Media Group station. Medicare rules are confusing. They should be. There are over 130,000 pages of regulations. There's Part A through D, Medicare Advantage, and Medigap. According to the CMS, there are government programs available that can help you pay for your medical expenses. Choosing the right Medicare plan is a really big deal. The wrong choice can cost you a lot of money, and the right choice can put more money in your pocket. Call one of our licensed representatives today. At 65 Plus Medicare, our free service can show you a plan that will maximize your Medicare benefits, ensure you are taking advantage of all available government assistance programs, and save you money. Plus, call right now for a free report on how to avoid costly Medicare mistakes. Call now. 800-884-9325. 800-884-9325. 800-884-9325. That's 800-884-9325. Have you racked up more than $10,000 in credit card debt? Are you barely getting by making minimum payments? You should know. The credit card companies are tricking you into thinking there's no way out. Credit card companies would rather you didn't know that there are ways you can become debt-free and you don't have to pay the entire amount you owe. There are debt relief programs that help people like you escape overwhelming credit card debt. National Debt Relief has helped tens of thousands of people just like you reduce more than $500 million of debt. National Debt Relief has helped so many people. They're A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. You don't have to declare bankruptcy or take out a consolidation loan. You have the right to settle your debt for a mere fraction of what you owe. Reduce a portion of your debt now. Call National Debt Relief at 800-518-4020. 800-518-4020. That's 800-518-4020. Plenty of people that started with nothing. Just a suitcase and a dream. In fact, it's that bad slow version again. Like you, It's playing way too slow. Anyway, I, I, it sounds it's good. Fine. Welcome back to WDW News Tonight. We are live on FM Radio 105.5. We're also on uh, 660 and AM 1520 WBZW. We're live, of course, on YouTube and also at listen.wdwnt.com. I believe the audio stream is, is finally back at listen.wdwnt.com as well. Thank you, of course, for joining us on uh, the world's only radio show about Disney parks. And uh, we are still looking for contestants for uh, the Pyramid. It's our, our California Adventure Sweet 16 edition. Uh, Gabe is ready to play, but he needs someone to play with. So come on, somebody. It's 407-774-8255 to play the uh, California Adventure themed edition of the Pyramid. So you do want to know a little something about the ECA. So that would help out a lot. We, they're not, they're well, not they're super not difficult. It, it, Nick it, made it over yeah. after all. Tom didn't make it. No, Tom, I didn't make the game. Tom harder ones. It's easier than Jeopardy. Yes. Although I don't know if that means anything because everybody thought Jeopardy was super easy, but just the people we had on couldn't play it. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. all right. Well, uh, so yeah, again, 407 774 8255. We'll get you on to, uh, to play the pyramid. Yes. So, we, we do have an in depth discussion next hour just about uh, transportation and getting around Walt Disney World. We're going to talk about monorails and parking and boats and and all sorts of things like that we've never really talked about that on the show so i think that'll be really interesting but i wanted to open the floor for a few minutes for a uh discussion a sort of a pressing issues discussion uh based on how crazy this week has been already 
I wanted to talk a bit about Pandora. I want to talk about Rivers of Light. And I want to talk about Star Wars because people have raised a lot of questions uh, and are asking things. So I want to bring in a few members of our illustrious panel. Of course, as I said earlier, we got Jason. Oh, look at this Rivers of Light music. Jason Diffendahl with us. Hello. Ron Deanna. We can't hear Ron. Hey, everybody. There we go. Uh, Eric Lancy. Hi, everybody. And Ashley Jasmer joining us. Hey, y'all. Isn't that great? It's great music. I don't know about the show. Um, so I guess hey, let's let's start with Rivers. Um, first of all, the show ran last night. It is, from what we've been told, that's the final version of it. Um, and it's it's 15 minutes long. Nighttime spectacular with seating. That is uh, 15 minutes long. I want that to sink in for a minute. Uh, but the debut is imminent. Now, we know Avatar opens uh, in May, but uh, Rivers of Light seems like it's going to debut this coming week. Uh, what does everybody think about this? Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of hoopla around Rivers of Light debuting. It doesn't seem like anyone really cares. The show is really short. They're going to try and cram in three of these a night, and uh, just a couple weeks before, I guess, the big hoopla will be May 27th when Pandora opens. I think I think they had they have to open it soon for a few reasons. One, it's now ten months behind schedule, behind the original opening date, yeah. and also they can't it, the the premiere the opening can't be so close to the opening of Pandora that you are just completely bottlenecking the park between two so it's sort of two attractions the, the land of pandora and then rivers of light you can't you can't have all of you you can't have this just abundance of people coming in at one time for the sort of the debut of both things at one time so i think they have to have it now while the crowds are down somewhat and let it run through and by the time may gets here whatever kinks they may still have to work out but this is what it's going to be that's a really good point that um you know they'll have three months for the locals to get uh to get in there to see it locals. for spring break is big <laughs> like we're gonna oh. have a lot of tourists too so. yeah no 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 yeah but and president's but, week for that matter too but you're also gonna have all the locals that want to see it yeah um, Jersey week. I mean, we're you we're got right. Yeah, you do have a lot of. You do have, um, you, yeah. My question is, um, really, with the show being only fifteen minutes, um, are they going to run more than one per night? Three. It's They're on the Disney World three. website already. Okay. I so, think they realized wow. what I think happened in the end um, is somebody looked at that that amphitheater. I mean, they figured out from Jungle Book what that amphitheater can actually hold which is not what they were told it was going to hold. Surprise. Right. Uh, which is, I think, about 2,500 if they're lucky. And somebody realized, well, here's the projections for Avatar, and here's what that theater can hold, and we need to do at least three. And I don't know if the time cuts were related to that or to the early reviews of the cast member preview version of Rivers of Light, but either way, um, it's now down to 15 minutes, which, which seems odd for a show that you built an amphitheater for. Certainly, you could have not built seats and put more people in and people can probably stand for 15 minutes it's when you get to like 27 with phantasmic that you, you don't want to stand for that long yeah it's almost like they should take all the seats out and fit four thousand people in there <laughs> well maybe they don't have a show that four thousand people want to see now <laughs> that might be the problem do we think that maybe once the initial fanfare is over that they'll eventually go they'll add to it and make it longer i mean the they certainly can i mean world of color has changed time and time and time again and it's along those lines a lot of projections and things you can play with i wouldn't doubt that a new version a complete new version of the show or a reworked version could debut at any point afterwards if they decide guests don't like it so this might just be a stopgap. they're trying to just yeah. skate by on what's actually already produced and not spend more money on I wish they were making a little bit of fanfare about it. I mean, I get why they're not. It's kind of embarrassing that it's yeah, I think they, 10 they, months like, and it's shorter, and they, no, it they really exist. don't want to publicize that. But no. Yeah, and I mean, they've got to get something out before 
uh, before April because that would be like the one year anniversary of when it was supposed to be released. So um, <laughs> it's also know. like kind of been done since December. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. It, they cut another three minutes, but all in all, I mean, it's it's been pretty much done. And to Jason's point, that April date, there was a lot of fanfare in April of 2016 about, it, yeah. about this. For it to I debut. get why they're not, they don't want to bring up that, oh yeah, it didn't actually come out. Sorry, y'all. Well, the other problem is, is Nighttime at the Park bottomed out more than more than just Rivers not being there. The Nighttime Safari tanked. Like, no no one reviewed it's, that positive. That's because you couldn't it's, see anything. It's awful. It is awful. That's why. Yeah. I had like one good one. I will say I had one that was really great, and then I had I like eight that were awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did have I did have one good one out of like four. So yep. Yeah. Honestly, our best one was we got lucky enough. We went right at twilight, so the sun was going down, which was later than we had ever been able to go before, and that one was fantastic. And then we went back and did it again when it was completely dark and it was horrible. Yeah. And Tiffin's has been empty from everything I've heard. Which is nice because I like eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Tiffins has something to do with the price, though? No, I think May come May twenty seven, Tiffins will never be empty again. No. It, it's on. It's in a dead end. I mean, once you get all that traffic through Pandora, I mean, at the very least, you're never going to get into Nomad Lounge again. Nomad Lounge is suddenly going to go from this nice, quiet, relaxing spot <sighs> to this place you will never get in again unless you go park at like eleven a.m. So how long do we think before that's reworked with some sort of characters into it? <laughs> I, I keep saying summer 2018. I it, it doesn't even need characters. It just needed some Disney music. I would have thrown Circle of Life in with pictures of real animals, which is something they do in the Circle of Life at Epcot. And I think it, it hits a real nice emotional chord for people. People come to Disney World, they generally like something about your company. They like something about Disney. <laughs> it's okay to embrace that. Like it's it's all right to also be artsy and address that this is a park about animals, which they do. Tree of Life Awakenings has that one show that is a Disney film music, mm -hmm. but imagery of real animals. And I think it it hits both of those very nicely. It it hits you get the emotion of those movies, those memories you have of those movies, but also um, it shows you the real life inspiration, which was kind of the whole marketing thing oh. behind Animal Kingdom when it opened. So, and and the way and the way Disney has really done well, I think maybe not uh, from a from a dollars and cents point of view, but I think they've always done a really good job, a really nice job with the Disney nature films. That yeah. could be that could be weaved mm -hmm. in pretty seamlessly, send oh, yeah. the, the message, and it's still well, very all the footage Disney. is Disney nature. It's just not it's not weaved seamlessly in. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, I'll I'll hold further judgment until I see it in person for myself. But uh, the early reviews out of the cast previews and what we saw, at least in video uh, from from Tuesday, was not uh, reassuring. It's lacking a lot of wow moments. And I understand, like obviously, a world of color. Keep in mind, anytime I've seen video of that it was never quite as impressive as seeing it in person. But it still was impressive. It, it's still wow. Mm -hmm. It's still it was a wow sort of thing yeah. to see even on a laptop to see video of world of color even before seeing it live seeing it on video made me want to see it live desperately so yeah. i mean it it, it, can, it can still have a, a positive effect i think as much as this is having a negative effect if it was that good i think it could have a positive effect too this is why they invited a bunch of social media mob <laughs> anyway. nick do we have another contestant yet or still no no, still looking for another contestant for Pyramid 407 774 8255. Give us a call. Come on, prizes from Theme Park Connection. Let's make it happen. Got some good stuff behind me, too, I think. Ooh, there's some real good stuff. Star Wars cards, Final Speaking Nation. Of, uh, well, let's let's talk about Pandora. Pandora has the opening date, May 27th. Um, I want to just talk about, uh, I forget if it, I think it was the last earnings call, not the one this week, um, where someone in the company said, we expect this to do for Animal Kingdom what Cars Land did uh, for California Adventure. Uh, that being said, they did a lot more at California Adventure than just Cars Land. Um, mm -hmm. But on top of that, uh, obviously the marketing machine is now in full motion. We finally have a date after all these years. 
There's this Visit Pandora website. There's this psychotic Visit Pandora Twitter account that keeps tweeting nonsense. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it's, it's like Joe Rody on another acid trip. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but the marketing machine is in full motion now and they expect this to be something big. Do we think, do we think they're right? Is this summer at animal kingdom finally going to be, uh, is the park finally going to make it? I think this is set up. I think this is set up for some sort of failure because I go back to, I really think this goes back to the delay of opening the seven dwarfs mind train. Once people wrote it, they said, we waited all of this time for this. Now, two years removed, two years later, seven dwarfs mind train, I think is an enormous hit. I always thought it was, but the first time I wrote it, I remember thinking, boy, we waited a really long time for this. And I think that as this happens and we think about the six years that people have been waiting for this, that once they go in, I think it's almost impossible to meet the expectations of what people have thinking this is what it took six years to build. Couple that with the delay with Rivers of Light and how poorly it's being received by all accounts. I, I just, I, I'm wondering if there isn't going to be some backlash over the summer. You know, I think um, part of the problem is that, you know, in the past, Disney used to be able to not announce things six years in advance, but now with websites what are you like about Disney Decade. Yeah, well, no, no, but they didn't. They they, they didn't. announced attractions that were supposed to open in like 1999. Like some of the things in that announcement were at the end of the decade. Well, yeah, but they didn't happen anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, none of almost none of them happened. Yeah. But you know, I I think the problem is that the difference between the Disney decade and now is that people are so much more impatient and seeking instant gratification that. You know, so, so it's it's almost like they can't even build anything of quality yeah. because uh, people are going to be impatient waiting for it. So they build crappy little things and then people don't like it. It's kind of like they're between a rock and a hard place. Sounds like universal. Well, that was actually going to be my comparison is I think Pandora itself is going to do phenomenal just like Harry Potter did when it first opened. I think... And I was one of the people I wasn't that excited for Pandora, but I've seen the pictures now that that big floating island thing is done, which is something that I didn't think, I didn't understand how they were going to be able to do it. And they did it, and it looks gorgeous. Um, and I think by that alone, the land itself is going to be phenomenal. Is it going to help the rest of the park? No, it's not. It's Everybody's there going to bottleneck to, into people Pandora. People have to come in that weren't going. Well, they're going to. It's going to help the park overall, but you're not going to see a bump in – the other parts of the park are not going to get more crowded. I don't think personally, I think everybody's going to want to be in Pandora and stay as relatively close to Pandora as possible. You're not going to have people migrating over to see Nemo or go explore Dino land USA. They're all going to hang around Pandora and maybe Africa. Yeah. But I think it itself is going to do very well. It's so far outside, you know, now seeing that website, um, it was kind of surreal to look at this this space website. Like it looks like a bunch of space junk and all the you know technical glitches and things going on. And then there's the Animal Kingdom logo at the bottom. And I remembered, <laughs> oh yeah, this is going in Animal Kingdom. This doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, I guess. Um, but then like the bio page with all the fake people talks. A, like, every person just has like a whole big blurb about conservation and what they're doing to save the Pandoran environment and the animals. And it's, it's going to be weird, but uh, nonetheless, it's happening. And speaking of Jason, Jason said people being impatient. We got the announcement officially. Now 2019 is the year in which we will visit uh, that remote outpost planet in the star Wars themed land at Hollywood studios and Disneyland. And people are already complaining. I'm calling it the same day as episode nine. It's possible that spring, spring of 2019 has been thrown around for over a year now. So I, it wasn't really a shock when we got 2019, but, but 2019, if, if you mean episode nine, that wouldn't be till Christmas. Well, I don't know. Like they moved both of the dates up. I don't know if, I don't remember if they moved. They're all Christmas. Now. They're all Christmas. It's I every thought year, it's every year, December. Well, they moved them up. They did move them up to May. Then they moved Rogue One and, 
They're now all back. Christmas, though. They're all Christmas now. I think that's like, more realistic, too, as a date, but... Maybe, but I, I think there will be enough pressure on them with this one that they will try to... They will not miss Summer of 19. I think they need to make Mm-mm. Summer of 19. Because Avatar will open this year. Toy Story will open next year, hopefully. Um, and then they'd have Star Wars in 19. They'd, they'd have three years pretty well covered. I was surprised at the 2019 date because when I was in Disneyland in December, the tour that I was on, we were told by the cast members that Star Wars that Star Wars Land in Disneyland was set to open summer of 2018. And so I was surprised to hear 19. I thought it was aggressive when I originally heard 2018, but then to hear that in 2000 that it is 2019 seemed to be more in line of what I saw construction wise. In Disneyland, but Mm -hmm. I was surprised because they definitely announced summer of 2018 to us. Yeah, but, I mean, you take what you hear from a cast member. Sure. (laughs) Was it a bus driver? No, was his name Randy. (laughs) Um, Do we have another contestant yet, Nick? We do. Thank you guys very much. uh, We'll talk to all of you in the second hour for our big uh, getting around Walt Disney World conversation. Uh, but I think that covers all the big topics for the week. But Nick, let's let's go ahead. Let's uh, play the pyramid. I love that music. All right, it's time for WDWNT, the pyramid. We have two contestants on hold with us right now, and uh, the first one I called in this evening was our good friend Gabe. Good evening, Gabe. Gabe? Oh, there you go. Gabe? Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. Me? Yes, you are a mainstay to the WDWNT games, and uh, so we look forward to seeing your performance tonight. Are you feeling good? Do you, do you know much about DCA? Uh, I, th- I think so, yeah. All right. And also, much like uh, many other game, this is like, I'm the guinea pig for this one. You are, and it's good. Yeah, it's a little bit different way we're doing it for the first time. We're putting it all in the hands of of our contestants and uh playing with you tonight is uh joseph joseph welcome to the show hello there where are you calling in from joseph um i'm right now in college in connecticut oh connecticut very good new england i wish i was in new england right now partying with, the, partying with the pats fans yeah i'm a giant fan so oh. i don't really care about oh. that it's oh. almost as bad <laughs> All right. Well, uh, have you ever been out to uh, California Adventure? Um, I've had in the past, like 2009, 2014 ish. That's good. That's good. You know a little bit about it. All right. Very good. All right. So, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to put. Uh, um, uh, how much time do we want to give them? There's six six clues. We go in 45 seconds or 60 seconds? 60, I should have, 60, 60, 60. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. We're going 60 seconds on the clock. What we're going to do is uh, I, I got you guys each your uh, your clues that you're going to try to get your other teammate to guess. Now, you really want to help the other person because the team with the most correct answers at the end of the night wins the biggest prize from Theme Park Connection. Now, of course, uh, everybody's going to be going home with a little something tonight. Uh for playing the game with us. So I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock. You can pass. Remember, like, so you got to give clues. Basically, you got to get through all six uh, uh, clues here. You cannot say any of the words that are in the clues, of course, to try to get the other person to guess. But anything else is uh, is fair game. Any questions before we start, guys? Uh, yeah, just quickly do. Um, Is it guessing the name uh, of the attra- uh, of the current or of the past attraction well what the uh well let, let's uh it's whatever's on on the whatever Depends i gave you camera. whatever's in front of you he has to guess oh okay without okay. the exact thing that's in front of you Do we know what category is what yes 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 and so i'm allowed we'll to say now. the name of the current attraction yes as long yes. as it's not it's contained like, right. within the clue that they have to guess Exactly. You can All say right. anything whatsoever as long as it's not those words that are in front of you. All right. All right. All right. So we are going to start off with Gabe. And Gabe, uh, your first category tonight is what's in a theme? What's in a theme? And uh, everything in this category will be attractions at Disney's California Adventure that have been rethemed. 
All right. So, so it'll be the original traction before the re-theme. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to put, uh, yeah, so for, for Joseph, yes, you're going to be trying to guess that, the original attraction. Um, we're going to put 60 seconds up on the clock. Um, you ready, Gabe? As soon as you start talking, I will start the clock. All right. Um, Monsters, Inc., uh, Celebrities, um, Creepy Puppets, um, in a car, in a in Hollywood, Does um, Joseph. No, he's supposed to be guessing, right? Joseph, uh, Playhouse Disney Love on Stage. No, mm. Mm. Uh, is that do I continue? Keep going, keep going. He can, uh, pass. He can pass. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Tower of Terror, um, yeah, there you go. Ferris Wheel with a Mickey face on it, but before there was Hard a Mickey wheel. face, it was a and it was called the blank wheel. Fun wheel. Yeah. No, no, that's what it is now. Yeah. No, he said wheel, though. We're moving to move the next okay. one. Okay. Um, hang glider. So I know over California. Um, um, uh, uh, fly, um, chair, uh, God, what is it called? Uh, <laughs> um, orange. In a, no, that's in, in the a, name. A giant... You can't say that. Next one. Oh crap! Um, Goofy Sky School, uh, Wild Mouse Coaster, Paradise Pier. Oh. Uh. Uh. uh, uh Road in uh, L.A. Uh, um. Okay. Go back to the first one. <laughs> That's time. Okay. That's well over. This experiment went about as well as I hoped. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. I no, they this. got some. They did. They got they got one, two, two and a half. Two and a half. Well, Gabe kept saying half the names of the attraction. <laughs> Can we go back? Uh, what what were the other ones? Can we go back? Uh, it was uh, Superstar Limo. Superstar Limo, which of course became Monsters Inc. Mike and Sully to the rescue. Right. Uh, the Sun Wheel. The Sun Wheel became Mickey's Fun Wheel. Right, and uh, Orange Stinger, which became Silly Symphony Swings, but I couldn't think of that name in the moment. Right. What was the other one we didn't get? There was six. Right? Uh, oh, and uh, Mulholland Madness. Mulholland Madness was the original uh, name of Goofy Sky School. It used to be themed to uh, driving in California, I guess. I don't know. There was a big map. All right, that was a that was a hard one because we're going back in DCA history. But uh, you know, maybe this one will be a little easier. We're gonna we're gonna hand the reins over to Joseph now on this one. Actually, you know what, you guys have, you guys have to hold on right now. We're we're really we're coming up on a on a hard break here. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna make it uh, we're not in gonna time. Make it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'd rather okay. rather not rush it. But uh, so when we come back, then yeah. uh, we'll do that. It was a good try. It was a good, 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 good start. Good start. I think you can only get go go up from here. Sure. Uh, if you also want to play the pyramid <laughs> for some reason, you could call four zero seven 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 four eight two five five. We have two minutes left, Nick. What are we doing? We do. Uh, well, coming up in the next hour, we are going to do. I told you this would go in the second hour. Right, right, uh, right. Wonderful world of psychotic comments. You guys did a fantastic job this uh, week. This week. Yeah, sure and and I will say that we haven't done. Uh, who hates Tom really in its full effect for a while. I think we no, did a short inversion. Yeah. We skipped it a couple and weeks. This week, people really, really hated me. So. People, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, on we also Facebook have, we got to talk about Planet Hollywood and Paddlefish still. We do. Oh my goodness. We have we a got, packed hour we got two lots of cram in there. Up. This. All right, oh, but uh, we're also going to play the pyramid. So if you guys again want to get on on the line, we could. You guys, I mean, they're not. They, look, I mean, I know they're listening to me right now. But come on, Gabe and Joseph, nod off to the best star. Only two. Only and have right. two, and then if we get another guys, pair on here, it looks like all they'll have to beat is like two or three, maybe. Yeah, but when we get back, uh, Joseph's going to take his turn. They're going to have lots of time to research these too. See, that's the uh, that's the plus of going first as well. You could uh, kind of research these answers. So Joseph will try to get Gabe to uh, guess some of his. Uh, his clues uh, when we return here on WDW News tonight. I'm Larry Levin, and I've been on the trading floor for 23 years. I was one of the biggest traders in the s What did you do? I have no <laughs> clue. We'll be right back. That's good enough.
Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Charles Grassley says Senator Sessions will be an independent attorney general. When he has to say no to the president of the United States, he'll say no to the president of the United States. Senator Sessions thanked his colleagues in the body for their support for his nomination. Uh, I want to uh, say again, I appreciate the president and his confidence in me. And by your vote tonight, I have been given a real challenge. I'll do my best to be worthy of it and look forward to working with each of you during that time. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia crossed party lines to vote for Sessions. The Northeast is preparing for winter's harshest storm yet. It's fast moving and could bring more than a foot of snow, strong winds and coastal flooding. Connecticut Governor Daniel Malloy says the snow will start before the morning rush hour on Thursday. This storm it may be a little tricky because it will start in the morning, but probably be very heavy. They're thinking at around 8 a.m. Uh, with snowfalls as much as one and a half uh, inches or more an hour, which is pretty hard to stay on top of and can cause some real traffic problems. Forecasters say snow totals could range from four to eight inches in the Philadelphia area, all the way up to 18 to 20 inches in Massachusetts and Maine. The company building the Dakota Access Oil Pipeline says it plans to resume work immediately to finish the project. Energy Transfer Partners got final permission from the Army Corps of Engineers today to proceed with a crossing of the Missouri River in southern North Dakota. Work on the $3.8 billion project had been stalled for months due to opposition by the Standing Rock Sioux. On Wall Street, the Dow down by 36 points to 20,054. The Nasdaq up eight. The S&P advanced one and a half. Oil up to 52.34 a barrel. More at townhall.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. Hi, I'm Inc. Magazine bestselling author Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my brand new book, Wealth Beyond Wall Street, because we all know another market crash could be right around the corner. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I discovered a way to grow money potentially double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Wealth Beyond Wall Street now to get your free copy and talk with a specialist to discover this little known strategy to get potential double digit growth during good years and never lose when the next stock market crash hits, all while building a tax advantage retirement. Call 1-800-920-8484 to discover this asset that people like Walt Disney and JCPenney use to grow wealthy. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call 800-920-8484, 1-800-920-8484. That's 1-800-920-8484. Welcome back. Hour two of WDW News tonight, now on the air. And thank you for joining us live. Of course, I want to talk about uh, our upcoming show. Next week is uh, a big one. It's uh, WWNT, the dating game. Uh, applications are open now. If you go to WDWNT.com, there's actually a post uh, where you can click and, and fill out the whole form and application. If you're a Disney fan looking for love, the dating game is back next week. Please, we need more applications. Please, people, go join Nick's uh, psychotic experiment continues. And can we actually finally send someone on a date? Would be nice. We'll find out next week. Right now, we do have... Uh, fifty percent males, fifty percent females uh, wow. registered. Yeah. How many people so far? Uh, just twelve. Okay. We know this. This doesn't get the biggest registration. I mean, it's a big commitment. You have to be single. You have to be willing to come on here and do it. Um, somebody wrote a nice long like why she wants to be on. It's it's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Effort goes a long way, folks. Said she's been listening since the pincast days. Oh, pincast. God bless. The pin cast. <laughs> Even know what the is for the two people out there that are going to get that uh yeah so that's next week we're also we'll talk about some romantic things at the disney park stuff like that next week it's a it's a love show next week and maybe we'll talk about rivers of light who knows uh so that's all next week nick who brings us wdw news tonight each and every week i'm gonna go with magical travel that's um, right. You have it in front of ding, you. Ding, ding. A magical Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner and is always ready to assist you in making your next trip to the Walt Disney World Resort 
Disneyland Resort or aboard the Disney Cruise Line even more magical. Right now, you can enjoy one free meal per person per night at select Walt Disney World quick service restaurants. Pretty good deal there. When you buy five night, six day room and a theme park ticket package at select Disney Value Resort hotels for arrivals most nights, May 20th through August 24th, 1917. Nope, 20. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. I didn't think the park was 2017. You do not have to go back 100 years. That makes more sense. Before Walt Disney World opened. That makes more sense. A lot more here now than there was yes. back in 1917. Yeah. Uh, and you have to book it by February 12th, 2017. Uh, for more information, that date's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. For more information on this special offer and many more, visit magicaltravel.com and book your next Disney trip today. You know what date is coming even sooner? <laughs> February 12th, 1917. <laughs> that, that's already been here. I wasn't even here for that. I missed it. No, I mean, so this know, is a great deal. I can go back and live this date. That I never got to experience. Just, you know, we just had the new year. Sometimes you think of the date a little yeah, wrong. Yeah, usually you mess up the end two, not the first two. 1917. Nick, we know you're old, but you're not that old. Please. <laughs> you're being too hard on yourself. Oh, boy. Let's play Pyramid. Let's do it. Bring in uh, Joseph and Gabe back on. How you doing, guys? Hey. All right, we're going to get you some more. Feels <laughs> like you guys have been on hold since 1917. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get you some more matches here we're gonna turn the tables here joseph is gonna Almost be the one as long as it took to build the world of avatar oh that's when it was announced 1970 yeah <laughs> all right guys we're gonna uh have joseph give the clues now he has his clues in front of us in front of him and the, the category <laughs> well we all have them i have them too so it is us the uh the category is Fill her up. And uh, this is going to have eateries, current eateries at Disney California Adventure. All right, Joseph, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I will start the clock when you start talking. Okay, first one, uh, Parasite Pier, Little Mermaid. Ariel's Grotto. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, second one, uh, it's a fine dining in Buena Vista Street. Um, uh, a circle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one is a Parasite Pier. Uh, it's right by Goofy Sky School. Uh, Paradise Garden Grill. Uh, Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Um, Corn Dog Castle. Anyway. Uh, next one is in Cars Land. Um, it has a hidden Mickey on the top of the building. Uh, Cozy Cone? No, Flows. Uh, well, uh, next one is in a pier. Uh, I can't say the name of it because it's part of the thing. Uh, quick service. Um, Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Uh, Paradise Garden Grill. Yep. Um, and then last one, uh, quick service, also in Buda Vista Street. Um, uh, the, the three little pigs, um, practical, um, gosh, um, Fiddler, Pfeiffer, and practical. Yeah. All right. We went to a minute 20, but you know what? You got, you, you got all six. six. Yeah, I'm giving you the six. Yeah, there you go. And that, that gives you eight. That gives you a total of eight for the game. That's a pretty good number, guys. Congratulations. Hey guys, uh stick on hold for a second. Uh well actually no, I got your info. So uh we'll get we'll get back to you about uh your, your address to get you out your prizes from Theme Park Connection tonight. Thank you both very much for playing. And of course, all our games brought to you by Theme Park Connection. They help collectors bring the magic of Disney right to their home. They offer the best selection of traditional and hard to find Disney and other entertainment based items. Whatever treasures you're looking for, you'll likely find it in their extensive online store at themeparkconnection.com or in person at the retail location just off OBT near the Florida Mall. Theme Park Connection is your connection to your dream collection. You know that that retail location? Uh, is closing. Uh, wow! It, sometime in the next month, they're having a uh, they're clearing out. They're going to be online only now. Mm. 
Um, so they are clearing out. So if you go down there, they're blowing out everything there at the store. Wow. And in fact, uh, so some things are like 50 to 75% off. But also, if you tell them you uh, heard about it on WWNT, they are giving another 10% on top of that right now. So if you go in the next two or three weeks, these last couple of weeks, they're open uh, in that retail location. Uh, you're going to get a real good deal. So let them, let them know WWNT sent you. All right. Very cool. Very cool. So we do have we do have one more contestant online to play Pyramid with us right now. So please hold on the line. We're going to try to find you a uh, teammate to play with. Someone to try, come play. Try to beat the number eight. The um, the that's the number to beat right now. Score eight. of eight is the score of eight. Score yeah. Of eight, yeah. So give us a call 407-774-8255. That's 407-774-8255. And we'll get you on. There you go. Uh, Nick, can we take a quick trip to my favorite place? That's the wonderful world. Of psychotic comment. Oh, we definitely, uh, definitely, eventually can. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> oh man, I'm reading them this time. All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's go with the uh, starring. I, I no, I just pale in comparison to Michelle. She does voices and everything. Starring roles closes at uh, Hollywood Studios. Progressive music lover wrote in. I applaud Disney's decision to close that place down. One less eatery that promotes an unhealthy lifestyle. I've, I've lost the count of the number of times I've walked through there only to leave in total disgust with the sweets and the snacks on display they have that like offer no benefit that only have vegetables. to the children except for a head start, start towards obesity. If you're on vacation, you can have a snack. Why am I not surprised that someone named Progressive Music Lover... <laughs> He's yelling about <laughs> um snacks. yeah they from la well there were some people that 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 sniped back mark said you know it's not as bad as some other places to have fruit um say it's stuff. okay right sin it's okay to have snacks once in a while when you're on vacation so as food rapper once said in moderation uh but uh perlandra Wrote in, wow, Disney would be a lot of fun with you in charge. We could ride all the rides with helmets on and eat rice cakes <laughs> until our nine o'clock curfew. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> um, Star Wars Land gets an opening date. We have one on, on this one. Uh, I say most of this goes to the Who Hates Tom portion of the show. Yeah. Uh, but Wayne Benjamin Hayes wrote in, as much as I love Disney, it has undoubtedly become a money-hungry franchise corporation. It is not what it used to be. Walt Disney is probably crying in his grave. We, we get so many Walt Disney's crying in his grave. Well, he got tired of rolling over. He did. He, Wayne goes on to say, fairy tales is all he had imagined for this place. Only happily ever afters. Floating hearts, floating hearts, floating hearts. So uh, there you go. I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I hope I'm not overlapping here. I don't think I've read this one yet. Uh, train station welcome show. Um, the, the, the new welcome show here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Jay wrote in, this show was just for fun. And it did the old the old welcome show was just for fun. It didn't sell anything, therefore it's gone. Spend money every second in every inch or get the bleep out of Disney. That's their motto. Walt Disney Consumer Products wrote in, <laughs> get the bleep out of Disney merchandise now available on the Shop Disney Parks app. <laughs> Download for free on the App Store and Google Play Store. And uh, then we have, of course, Alex wrote in. Alex is near and dear to my heart with this comment on the uh, the, the annual pass holder entrances. I have never in my life seen more miserable people. You're also very cranky and are acting like a bunch of freaking babies. Are you really getting this nasty over this post? You all need to find a hobby and stop whining like a bunch of jerks. So there you go. Wonderful world of psychotic comments this week. That was week. it? It was a crazy week. It, it was. It was a crazy week. I'm guessing you didn't even get to like the stuff from yesterday. Yet. You know, there were there was so much to dig through. I think I next don't... week we got to get to that stuff from yesterday. We will. We will. Right. Um, and uh, the wonderful world of psychotic comments uh, was, of course, brought to you by Wigs. Wigs. You want me to read it? You nope. <laughs> the wonderful one of psychotic comments brought to you by Wigs, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. Support WDWNT and get access to an exclusive content. And exclusive ex content. Yeah, yeah we still haven't I'll get that. that out of there. Exclusive content that was not Nick's fault. Uh, that you just can't find anywhere else, like like this. 
yeah. like this. Uh, for more information, go to patreon.com slash WDWNT or visit WDWNT.com and click on the Patreon link. I do have news for you. It is pretty much more of this. Well, uh, tonight you're except, getting a post show. We have a post show tonight. It's less professional. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, this week, we uh, there's a podcast out that's not out yet. You can get early access to. And as well, uh, seasons one and two of the Super Obscure Show, which you can't find anywhere else anymore, uh, now available for download on there. We're doing all sorts of, we, we have a manager in charge of Patreon now and all kinds of sorts of new things going on there. So uh, it'll be a great way to not only support WWNT, but we're going to give you lots of crazy cool stuff. Join Wigs today and help send Tom and Nick over to that $21,000 <laughs> restaurant at, uh, no, at Disneyland. We try to only use it for things that will actually so that we can help you it. out, like maybe Planet Hollywood Observatory and Paddlefish Review. Oh, we're going right in. Okay, crackpot, let's get cooking. What did we just eat? Uh, and this time around, we got two uh, two brand new restaurants at Disney Springs, Nick, that we yeah. went to. We went to uh, the Paddlefish. And Jason, where are we starting? Paddlefish or Planet Hollywood? And by the way, our caller that wants to play Pyramid, hold on if you want. We're trying to get you another another teammate, but uh, if you go, I understand. But again, 407-774-8255 is the number. There you go. Jason, where are we starting? Paddlefish. Paddlefish. Uh, that's the more recent one. Mm. Uh, so Nick and I went and we did a uh, media VIP thingy um, at Paddlefish uh, on Friday, which was really neat, and we appreciate that. That was fun. Uh, but then I also went, uh, and Michelle actually went too. Nick bailed because he had other things to do. It was, you know, it was Super Bowl Sunday. It was way too stressful. I should have never said I would go. There's sure. no way I could leave the house on that day, get back, and feel okay about myself. I had Chili the cook. I had I had stuff to get Who's ready. Who's Chili the cook? I thought you were cooking. I mean, chili cheese tots <laughs> with my famous uh, oh, chocolate chipotle chili that you love. It sounds good. Should have brought you some tonight. Anyway, I went to brunch. So we did not only do the media event. In fairness, I figured you have to go and actually eat at the restaurant. It's not fair to write a review just based on a media preview. But we did get to try a lot of stuff with the media preview. Um, Jason, you go ahead and scroll down. And we'll talk about a couple of uh, food dishes of interest if we can. Um, there's the brunch menu. I really wanted to try the brunch menu because I saw Monte Cristo there, and I was like, I got to see how this Monte Cristo is. Um, and it was pretty neat, but keep keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Uh, I know this isn't terribly interesting for those. How's the breakfast there. burger? What's on that? We didn't have the breakfast burger. Uh -huh. yeah, I got to go back and get the breakfast burger. This this place has so much food. It does. This review, if you go to WDWNT.com and read the review, 30 items. We reviewed 30 drinks, appetizers, entrees, and desserts in one review. We've never done it before. It's like 3,000 words. It's insane. So if you really want to go eat at Paddlefish, you, you got to check out this review. There you see the bread. Nick, what, what were your highlights from the from the media preview? What would you like? Uh, Food-wise, the scallops were phenomenal. Yeah. If you love scallops, these are prepared perfectly seared scallops with a uh, cauliflower puree and Brussels sprouts. And I wasn't even too sure about the Brussels sprouts, but every once in a while when the restaurant does them right, they're good. And uh, it was absolutely fantastic. How about, I know you love those lobster corn dogs. Yeah, the lobster corn dogs. I didn't realize they were a holdover from Fulton's Crab House. I didn't know that either. But uh, the spicy aioli sauce that you drizzle on or dip them in yeah. uh, makes it. Uh, the, the lobster inside so fresh, so good. And then you just slather all this stuff that's totally not good for you on there, but it is delicious. Uh, the music lover guy would not would not approve. No. Of these corn dogs. No, progressive music lover? No. Progressive music lover. Sorry about that. Don't go to the fish, dude. Yeah, no, I thought those were great. The scallop was fun. The crab cake. Oh, oh I thought the crab yeah. cake was great. Crab cake. I like the lobster uh, guacamole a lot. I did too. Um, I, I wish it was a little bit more flavorful. I don't know what I was looking for, but it was very fresh. It was very good. Uh, the chips that come with it, the tortilla strips that would come with it were really good. They were actually seasoned with the Hawaiian red sea salt, the, that yeah. volcanic salt that's like kind of uh, popular right now. I actually use that at home. It's very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> the tuna. It's the right tuna. my local honey. Yeah. The, the poke was good too. I like that a lot. It was um, everything tasted fresh and good. And, and that, the poke had a little spice to it, which was nice. Yeah. You needed that there. That was good. Um, uh, we had those beef skewers on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Those were spectacular. 
accurate. Okay. I, I could see where they would be. They they weren't bad just with everything else on the menu. I, I don't know why so I'd go that way. Did you did you get those? We got it. Scroll, Jason, scroll down a little bit. I think they're right under the beef skewers. I don't see the reason for them. If you like crab, go with the crab cakes. If you're gonna do seafood, there's other ways to go. It's a neat. I, I think you sometimes say this. It's a neat bloggable type item that you can get and take pictures. Well, no, I mean it's a picture people yeah. can take and and show on their social media and be like, I'm eating crab fries. But in, in no, actuality, the milkshake is what you need to take a picture. There's of. nothing to do with these. The fries are delicious, and I think you even said that. Good the, fries. Yeah, uh, and the fries were amazing. And they're the same fries that you'd get with a meal. Yeah, the sandwiches come with the fries. But I mean, this is just a mess. The, the sauce doesn't do much for you. Yeah. Again, good quality crab. Yeah. Just together, it's not really a thing I need to order. Let's run through the uh, alcohol real quick. JC, scroll down a little bit. Uh, we'll see the alcohol stuff. Um, that that not everyone's margarita. I love mm. super spicy. Really great. Uh, keep going. We'll keep. We'll breeze through these pretty quickly. Uh, the sangria I didn't like. I love. I didn't it. think. It, did you really? It was one of my I favorite. The review. I, I didn't know. like it. I know you did. I know you did. Uh, this was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, it it didn't. You might have wanted it even a little bit more fruity flavor, right? I think. Yeah, because it's yeah. not what I expected a sangria. It was the mild fruity flavor, and it was it was you know, very I like good. Fruity drinks, and everybody in the chat can make their jokes. Oh, this thing, the Gold Rush. The Gold Rush, which is twenty dollars, but they make it at your table on this board. So that's when we ordered the picture you're looking at now, Nick. Is uh, that's when Josh ordered it on Sunday. Um, and they actually made it at the table. Not that the lady didn't make it in front of me at the bar when we <laughs> ordered it, but um, that was really neat. You Can still I, get like half of that ginger beer. You but. do. And, and I'm not a ginger beer fan at all. I don't like the Moscow Mules. This is very similar to a Moscow Mule. I loved this ginger yeah. beer. I wish it I, wasn't $20, yeah. but it's wonderful. And I'm not a lover of that. So I'd give it a shot if, you, if you're there. Yeah, that was great. Um, where's my Mai Tai? I want to talk about my Mai Tai because that's still my favorite. Was that your favorite too or no? It probably was. Oh, Captain Handsome was good too. Remember when I couldn't remember the name of yes. it later? But I, the guy tried to convince me it was Admiral Awesome. Yes. The guy that worked there was like, no, it's the Admiral Awesome. I was like, no, it's Captain Handsome. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the little bird was fine. It was all right. Yeah. It was solid. It was yeah. good. There wasn't um, a bad, I had nothing that I didn't, or didn't like. Mai Tai. I want that Mai Tai every yeah. night. Oh, so good. I never. I've had Mai Tais before. I've never liked them. Oh, yeah. This was real Same good. Here. Uh, the other twenty dollars drink was the Bloody Mary, which which uh, Michelle made me order. And the presentation is gorgeous. Good. And you know what? It I is, but it sucked. <laughs> oh, did it? That also. So the Admiral's Punch was terrible. Oh yeah, that's it's the awful. big shareable drink that's like forty eight dollars. It's a novelty oh, thing don't, that you get. Don't yeah. bother. There's there's the. Uh, How was it? Oh, it's terrible. It was that bad. Yeah, the crab and the shrimp were good, but that speaks for their seafood quality. But the what's the price on that Bloody Mary? That's a twenty. That's twenty. Okay, that's the other twenty dollar you know, drink. I don't mind paying the sixteen dollars for these drinks because they were they they're were phenomenal, and they they are a lot of work in each. They're one. put together well, and they're blended well. Yeah. They had some. Gr they had a great bartending staff. We got to know Melissa a lot was of so them. great. Yeah. If you see Melissa, uh, she has glasses. If you see her and you go to the bar, tell her Nick and Thompson. Just say they were the creepy guys from the media event. <laughs> uh, oh, the lobster roll was good too. It was really good. Yeah. I just there's other things I'd rather spend the money on than this menu. Don't, don't bother with the salmon. Uh, the clam roll was really great. That's a lunch option. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, there's my Monte Cristo, which doesn't look like the Disneyland one, but it's just as good, if not better, and a massive portion for the price. If you want to go have it. That's the thing about paddlefish. They have some real expensive drinks and entrees. But if you go for brunch or lunch, there are some really well-priced sandwiches. You can get in here cheaper than homecoming sandwiches you can eat here. Mm. And I think this is slightly better. The other cool thing, here you can get your 20% pass holder discount on food and regular beverages. If you have tables in Wonderland, that also kicks in the alcohol. Oh. So a lot of good discounts being offered at Paddlefish and as well. Not to be uh, uh, passed up on the, the Monte Cristo is a breakfast version, like it has egg and everything, right? Doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was so, fun. So it's, and it's very on different. French toast. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Josh's different. fish and chips was my favorite thing we've had. That's crazy expensive for that. So, so the thing is, it's it's halibut, which by the pound, 
is super expensive right now. So Josh suggested it's those pieces are huge. What they could do is at least drop a piece and drop that meal to 19 bucks. It's 33 right now, but if you realize what halibut's going for per pound right now, it's actually not unreasonable. Well, all right. It's what they have to price it at with halibut right now. The filet mignon was a disappointment, but you shouldn't be getting steak here anyway. Go to Boathouse if you want a steak. Um, then let's talk about dessert because these were fantastic. I love this milkshake. It's the prettiest milkshake I've ever seen, and it tastes good too. Um, really love that they have a drink dessert. Uh, there it is. It's gourd. The preparation, they do such a better job than, than Planet Hollywood and Toothsome combined wow, on yeah. that presentation. It's gorgeous. Like, look at that chocolate finish. It's just solid, like coated. It looks like a piece of art. It's gorgeous. And it, and again, I thought it was better taste-wise than the others, too. But then what we had at the media preview, uh, the, the bourbon, what, what was it? What's the name of that there, Jason? Bourbon pecan tort. Yeah, tart. That was out me. of this world. Yeah, that's not the full size version you'd get if you order it. But my God, was this thing amazing! We need to go back and order the full size. Might be my favorite dessert I've had there. I know you're putting. It I right said up it's there. my favorite it on property. Be. Yeah, I put it above my Frontera pecan pie. Uh, carrot cake wasn't bad either. It's fine. Um, paddlefish was spectacular. All in all. Look at the uh, view. Blown away. We need to go back. Yeah, the views. Forget it. Uh, if you want to really read up on it, we have the photo tour. There's a video in the review. And again, the review is massive. Please go check it out. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into that to make sure you guys uh, get the most for your money when you go to these places. Um, I love paddlefish with a couple more visits. If they keep up this quality of food, I think it's going to be my new favorite at Springs. I think it's going to beat Boathouse. Neck and neck, yeah. It is if, if right it's... now, but we got to go back and do the boil, right. and I want to do that late night. Menu. I was a little disappointed with the boil at the preview. I, I can't yeah. really see it being something I really want to. I think it was just cold, into. though. We got to try it. We got to go try it. Yeah. Uh, let's. I don't. I don't want to waste more time. Paddlefish. There's plenty to read there. Uh, I think everybody wants to hear us talk about Planet Hollywood, the Observatory. So, yeah. So this was the week before Planet Hollywood Observatory. Same bunk. I'm gonna it do air quotes opened uh, the third floor wasn't done there's almost no movie props in the cases yet still i don't know how um we did not have you know i, I we joke about it a lot it wasn't the worst meal i've ever had at disney world it certainly wasn't the best and there were some things that were redeeming about it i thought the drinks um were good i thought there were still a couple that were real bad but there was a couple of drinks that i really loved um, the oh, observatory is what I had. I thought that was great. Yours was fantastic. What did you have? My drink? Yeah. Do you remember what you had? Do, 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 do. I honestly don't. I was apologize. It, uh, it wasn't the planetary punch, was it? No. We can get down to the picture yeah. and find it. Um, all, I, all, I will, all I have to say about this place is if you go, take a trip to Flavor Town, become the mayor, you will be that happy. burger was good. Yeah. You'll be good to go. You got to choose very carefully here. Um, there's some stuff that's real terrible. There was a couple of appetizers yeah, that, you had that, were, that were junk. I think you had the planetary punch, yeah, I did. which was great. It was really good. Yours was oh, great. And mine was yeah, great. Yeah. The space monkey was a huge disappointment because I love chocolatey, alcoholic banana drinks. It's a crazy disappointment. And it had almost no flavor. Cosmic Colada is the best pina colada on property. It's not a normal pina colada either. It is something different. It's got Malibu coconut rum, Jim Beam. Uh, Jim Bean Kentucky Fire and Coconut Puree. Oh, yeah, that was excellent. Yeah, and it has right. such a unique flavor for a pina colada. I love that. I'm going to go back and get that again for sure. Um, and then even the, uh, what was the other? The mojito was good too. Oh, I like that one, the observatory. That's what I had. Okay. Yeah. Um, stay away from those giant multi person drinks. They weren't that great. Um, appetizer wise, it's there's a couple of good things. I like the, the peri peri shrimp, I liked a lot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't seem as a no. I mean, was. I do. If I got a nice portion of those, but I mean, that's yeah, not enough one. to redeem the appetizers. No, you should get it on its own and get the. You should just get the. Like again, this isn't going to be an award-winning meal, but if you get those Captain Crunch chicken tenders, they're enjoyable. Right. I like them. Don't I get like the nachos. Tenders. The nachos were nachos were awful. terrible. Awful. Oh, oh, I mean, get the so bland. Get the Ferris. Do not. Just go those for were it. like rocks. Can we talk about the pork buns? Ugh. They were literally, the buns were as hard as rocks. I couldn't believe it. 
Yeah, those are nasty. Yeah, that was unreal, man. Um, so again, go read the review. We'll spend more time on it there, including my Ferris wheel of appetizers. Look at that thing. You got to see it. It's actually a Ferris wheel. Um, yeah, so that's on the site on www.nt.com. Full review of the Planet Hollywood Observatory. It was bad, not as bad as we imagined, but still pretty. So can I just say the, the so the mayor of Flavortown had it was a burger pastrami um i think and then it had the donkey sauce of course you got the donkey yeah. sauce and uh something else on i think too uh pastrami swiss swiss cheese the creamy slaw that's right and the pickles dijon mustard and i'm gonna go out on a limb you saw that picture there uh don't add the lobster <laughs> no but here's the thing about the mayor of flavortown it, it, like it sounds like a lot of me it was just really good at the pastrami with the beef and it was actually decent beef i really really like the flavors together but what made it is yeah. that pretzel bun that pretzel bun is phenomenal See, my pretzel bun was destroyed and the one i got they they charred the bottom made it yeah. making it giving it this crispy texture and it was a buttery pretzel bun and it just melted Mine in your mouth come out so so good but the 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 i gotta say the pulled pork in the sandwich was really good yeah uh Someone asked about tables and wonder. I don't know if that was for paddlefish or here. I explained it for paddlefish, but um, at Planet Hollywood, no, they're not taking anything yet. So, but uh, yeah, go check out both of those reviews. They're both very lengthy, give you a, a, review, a review of a ton of items, uh, trying our best to cover these places for you so you know what to do when you go, or, or maybe tell you just it's not worth your time, which might be the case with Planet Hollywood Observatory. There's my crazy milkshake. I did like the milkshake, though. I know you did. As bad as the M&M's look on there. And chocolate was pretty generic right. ice cream was nick uh we're gonna take a quick commercial break yeah we're gonna take a quick break when we get back uh we we're gonna uh one way or the other we're gonna play pyramid with the uh, guest on hold we'll yes. uh serve that up and uh if you want to play though you could still have uh, yourself a couple minutes to get in with us 407 774 8255 Seven seven four eight two five five is the number. Give us a ring. And when we get back, uh, we're going to go into our big in-depth discussion about transportation around the Walt Disney World. Medicare rules are confusing. They should be. There are over 130,000 pages of regulations. There's Part A through D, Medicare Advantage, and Medigap. According to the CMS, there are government programs available that can help you pay for your medical expenses. Choosing the right Medicare plan is a really big deal. The wrong choice can cost you a lot of money, and the right choice can put more money in your pocket. Call one of our licensed representatives today. At 65 Plus Medicare, our free service can show you a plan that will maximize your Medicare benefits ensure you are taking advantage of all available government assistance programs and save you money. Plus, call right now and get a free report on how to avoid costly Medicare mistakes. Call now. 800-884-9325. 800-884-9325. 800-884-9325. That's 800-884-9325. Great minds throughout human history have praised simplicity, Leonardo da Vinci and Albert Einstein among them. Most of us would have learned the simplicity lesson in school in some form of the KISS method, or keep it simple. The purpose, don't overcomplicate things. It only confuses people. This is Ron Trzinski of the Original Mattress Factory, and we strive to make purchasing a mattress as simple as possible. We build mattresses and box springs in our own local factory and sell them direct to you at everyday low prices that are clearly marked. No middleman markups, no changing product names to confuse you, and definitely no phony sales or so-called freebies that deceive you into thinking you are getting a deal. Those ads touting a free box spring with the purchase of a mattress or free five-year financing may appeal to the senses, but don't benefit you, the consumer. So if you are shopping for a mattress, remember to keep it simple and save. Check out an original mattress store near you and experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. Hi, I'm Inc. Magazine bestselling author Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my brand new book, Wealth Beyond Wall Street, because we all know another market crash could be right around the corner. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough, and since then I discovered a way to grow money potentially double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Wealth Beyond Wall Street now to get your free copy 
copy and talk with a specialist to discover this little known strategy to get potential double digit growth during good years and never lose when the next stock market crash hits, all while building a tax advantage retirement. Call 1-800-920-8484 to discover this asset that people like Walt Disney and JCPenney use to grow wealthy. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call 800-920-8484, 1-800-920-8484. That's 1-800-920-8484. We are now conducting our final systems check. Please stow all carry-on items in the under seat compartment. For your safety, remain seated with your seatbelt fastened during your flight and watch your children. Welcome back to WDW News tonight. We're celebrating uh, California Adventures Sweet 16, 16th birthday. Uh, For those of you who have asked in the chat, uh, this thing hanging from the microphone here, if you're watching the video, uh, is a magic keeper. This is that new thing, uh, that little keychain. You can put your magic band icon, or you want to call it a puck, whatever you want to call it. You put it in here, and you can carry it around with you. Yay! It's finally a thing. If you want to watch Tom almost break this for 20 minutes, there's a video on YouTube where I explain how you do this, show you how it works, do an unboxing video, basically. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, It'll be up on the blog uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, quick reminder, the dating game is next week. Please go apply if you're a single Disney fan uh, and you want to play something fun with us. Uh, everyone that that participates, we're going to send a little something of a thank you gift um, because we know it's it's uh, you're putting yourself out there in a big way, and we appreciate that. And I, I think it'd be a lot of fun, and maybe uh, you could find the love of your life. Who knows? Next week on uh, Nick's, Nick's Pet Project, the dating game is back. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in again, uh, live on 105.5 FM uh, in Orlando, and as well on AM radio on 660 and uh, 1520 WBZW, and as well all of you at listen.wdwnt.com and on YouTube. And uh, with that being said, uh, Nick, I believe uh, we're going to celebrate more of DCA's 16th birthday with another round of the Pyramid. Take it away. We certainly are. Uh, we're going to bring out our contestants right now. And uh, we do have uh, Tyler and Jonathan on with us uh, this evening. Uh, Tyler, good evening. Howdy. Hey, thanks for calling in and playing the pyramid with us tonight. And, uh, and then we, yeah, and then we also have Jonathan on with us. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, how's it going? All right, so these two contestants are going to be playing for some uh, prizes from Theme Park Connection. They have uh, their categories in front of them with six clues. Uh, They have to get their teammate to guess as many of those clues within the 60-ish seconds as uh, as they can. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, hopefully uh, have them walk away with some prizes from Theme Park Connection. Now, the number to beat tonight is eight. We had Gabe and Joseph, the team of Gabe and Joseph. Josebe. Gaysev? I don't know. I'm trying please, to give them please a... Please stop. No? Okay. Please right stop. Uh, we do have... Uh, they have eight. They got eight. So uh, that's the number to beat tonight. We're sure you guys can do it. We're going to start off with... Uh, uh, let's start off with uh, Tyler. Giving the clues. Yes. Howdy. And uh, Tyler's going to give the clues over to uh, Jonathan. Now, Tyler has the category in front of him. Let's party, which is uh, all six answers will be parades and parties that were once at Disney California Adventure. All right, uh, Tyler, you ready to give your clues? Oh, God, I hope so. All right, I will start (laughs) uh, the clock as soon as uh, you start giving your first clue. Go ahead. Okay, first one. Uh Uh-oh, I didn't hear any of that. I can't hear him. No. Oh, you can't hear me? Okay. Oh boy, it's a little garbled. It was. Sorry, you got it, Tyler. Do you uh, want me to take? Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You don't happen to working? have the show on in the background, do you? No, I don't. So you can hear him now. That was fine. Now. Why is it when he gives the clue? I don't know. Try, try again. Okay, the first one was Disney Channel original movie. Had Zac Efron. It was a show. High School Musical. Yep. All right, the next one was, uh, it was like Toy Story themed. It was at California Adventure. I guess it was the second Party show. Bench. That- yes. All right, next one. We got uh, Daft Punk music, super 
Electronic. Uh, I can't. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got. Uh, it just came back. World of Color. Uh, no regular one. You know, weird. Uh, I can't even say the word. See what uh, park it just it's came at. Back from Walt Disney World. Oh, the Main Street Electrical Parade. Yes. All right. Let's go. Um, oh my God! How do I even describe this one? I think it was the first. It was like. It was themed to the state that it's in. It was the first Eureka. show they had. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, um, last one, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Can I say that? Yeah. Mad yeah. party. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Is that all of them? Yeah. He got Eureka in like two seconds. I, I don't even know seconds. how to describe that. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually know someone that was in Eureka, and I usually tease them about it. I usually, like, like say, would it make you more comfortable if, if I dressed as half of the Golden Gate Bridge? Oh, that was amazing, uh, guys. If you have never seen Eureka, please look it up on YouTube. It's a parade about California, and it is psychotic. So please go watch it. All right. Excellent job. And by the way, Let's Party was a nod to the opening of Block Party Bash, which I first started. Mm -hmm. You guys got six, so uh, you guys are rocking. Here, we're going to go to the next category. Jonathan's going to give out the clues. Tyler's going to try to guess. The category is going around in Carthay circles. Oh, this, well, I'm screwed. This is, <laughs> this is full of attractions at DCA that send riders around in circles. All right. You, uh, you all ready with your clues, Jonathan? Yeah. All right. I'll start the clock when you start to give them. This is Ariel's father in The Little Mermaid. Um, say it again. Where's the clue? Up and, and this is the, the father of uh, Ariel in The Little Mermaid. And you'd go uh, up and down on a horse, typically. Oh, my God. Um, King Triton's carousel. Yep. Uh, the main character, and it's tough to be a bug. And it's sort of the Dumbo-style ride there. Oh, uh, Flick's Circus, I think? Flick's we'll take Fire? it. We'll take it. Keep going. Uh, the ride that always shuts down because of the wind, it's silver, but that's not in the name of the ride. <laughs> um, the Paradise Pier. Uh, pass. Okay. Yeah, pass that one. Um, Larry the Cable Guy in Cars, his character, his ride in oh, Cars Land. Oh, um, Mater's, I wish I, Mater's Junk Hair Jamboree? Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, this originally started out as a Sun Ferris. Oh, um, God damn it! What's the name? <laughs> I'm so close to myself. Uh, Mickey's. Mickey's. Nope, he oh, said God. Mickey. Pass. Next. Oops. Yes. Wrong one. This is this is the orange stinger. It's now. Oh uh, dear God! We're at like nine, right? Uh, go Golden Zephyr. That's not it. It's a <laughs> animated series. <laughs> it's time up yet? Oh my God, I do not know California. <laughs> All <laughs> right, uh, Golden Zephyr was the other one. I like that he said it's silver, but that's not the name. Yeah. Uh, it's Golden Zephyr, even though they're silver. Um, that one I was guessing was that Silly Symphony Swings, Nick? Yes, that one. Yeah, so it used to be the Orange Stinger. Now All Silly right, Swings. Do we miss, miss any other ones? Uh, no, Golden Zephyr and Silly Symphony Swings and Mickey's Fun Wheel. He based said yes, Mickey. he said Mickey, but oh, it Mickey's was Mickey's Fun Wheel. I'm so dumb. You guys got more than eight anyway. You did nine. So you guys won. <laughs> Guys, got it. All right, very good. We'll save the other game. We'll try to play it in our post show post with our show. Patreon Wings members. members yeah. Get ready to call in and play for some prizes. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Hold on the line. I'm gonna get your addresses to get you out prize from Theme Park Connection. All right, thanks. We're running woefully over time as always, but I'm gonna take us into our in-depth discussion. Uh, you know, Walt Disney World made a couple of weird announcements or semi-announcements about their transportation systems. Uh, so I want to take some time this week to talk about transportation to Walt Disney World. If we don't complete this, we will uh, carry it over uh, into next week because I think this is a real important topic. Uh, so let's bring back the illustrious panel. Jason, Eric, Ashley, Ron, welcome on back. And uh, I want to start with parking because no one ever seems to talk about parking at Walt Disney World. I don't know why because it's kind of a in a lot We'd of like places. We like to block it out of our minds. That's yeah, in a lot of yeah. places it's a problem. <laughs> And sometimes it determines where I go. Sometimes I just don't want to go through the problems of the Magic Kingdom parking thing. And, you know, then go through the monorail or the boat. The monorail's down. The ferry takes forever. 
sometimes they just don't want to go through that. So it'll make me not go to Magic Kingdom. Um, and then certainly there are other parks that people don't like to park at. So where where do you like to park? Where do you don't like to park? Where do you have tips, tricks, whatever? I'll, I'll open the floor to everyone. Well, uh, one thing I want to say is that um, my sort of complaint with parking, like your complaint about Magic Kingdom, my complaint about parking is at Epcot. Epcot, they used to let you park right up at the front, uh, essentially, um, you know, the the next row after the handicapped row. Um, but they've started, at least the last time I went, they've started making you park way further back and save yeah. that front whole section. So it's much well, less convenient than right it used to be. Handicap now. Yeah, but but they make you park behind the trees now. Or at yeah, least they did when I went. Seen, yeah, there's days where they so, do it. So, I mean, you get there at 8.30 thinking, oh, I'm going to get to park right up front and walk yeah. and not have to deal with the tram. And they park you halfway back in the lot for no real good reason. There was a day where they started us all the way out in that, that lot way to the left. Like the weird side lot, like all the way out yeah. by Woodpecker Lane. Yeah. Um, so that'll happen if they think it's going to be like a crazy food and wine weekend day. They all start out there, like behind the cast lot, and it's insane. Yeah, so that makes me angry about Epcot parking. No. Um, you know, really, Epcot used to be great. I used to like parking at Epcot when you got well, there. Well, I could describe a open. lot of things at Epcot. Couldn't I? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> the, the parking there used to be the best, and I think I used to like parking at the studios more when you used to be able to walk a little easier until they put up those, like, guardrails blocking the... Uh, I mean, this happened years ago sometime, but they put up the guardrails blocking that uh, first lot where the handicap parking is, so you can't just oh, yeah, they go put around up those big things. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You used to be able to just cut across, like just wait for a bus to pass and cut across, and it was three seconds. Animal Kingdom has always had the worst overall lot, I think, since it opened. That left side of that lot is such a pain. You kind of have to take the tram. It's a real far walk. It's the only one I yeah. normally take the tram for anyway. Yeah, if you park on the right yep. side, you're fine. It's a, it's a real short walk. But that the left problem, side, forget Yeah, it. the problem with Animal Kingdom is like most parks, um, you know, that you can park close enough and then uh, you can walk and you're, you're somewhat close. But Animal Kingdom is like so stretched out that by the time you get from the main entrance past the handicap and past, past the preferred parking, you're like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And can I lament the loss of diamond parking? Oh, so? yes. Can we, let's talk about diamond parking for a minute, can we? Ron, did, did you have it? Yeah, my, um, my mother-in-law always had AAA, so we'd always use that when we went down there. And I know one of the reasons they got rid of it was, you know, people like me buying them off Abuse. eBay for other yep. trips. But it was yeah. the greatest thing. I mean, oh, it was excellent. But it no was... one there knew what it was because I would just show a regular AAA card and they let me go because they had no idea what that's, they were looking and that's for. That's why I think they had to stop it was because yeah. the word got out. But diamond parking was a spectacular think, benefit. Does it even still exist? Does AAA diamond even still exist? No, I think they that's stopped. That's why, I think. There's some of the packages they do with AAA, I think they stopped. And who knows for the reason like AAA wasn't paying them anymore. They weren't yeah. guaranteeing their guides or something, but... It was all. It was more than just. Oh, we know we're doing preferred parking because this was a year or so before they put that yeah, in. Yeah, it was. It was away. more than a year before preferred parking. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you preferred park at the Magic Kingdom, it's a pretty bad park to do it at, um, because I mean, you, you still got to get a monorail or a ferry anyway. So, how much time are you actually saving? And yeah. instead of you know, just take the tram. I mean, it's not a. You know, it's one park where I just don't necessarily understand parking preferred. Not that it's great in any of them, but that one particularly doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. And also, late, uh, you know, from when I've gone in the last couple of years to when I was a local, they police the parking lots a lot later. Like they actually it used to be like three or four o'clock. The parking attendants were done. You just found a spot yeah. wherever you could. Now mm -hmm. there's still, you know, you get an hour. I think there's too closing. much anarchy at five and six, so they had to keep them a little longer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I love 
the new parking configuration and the parking structures at Disney Springs. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's a, an amazing difference. I, I will say I've actually we rent a car every trip and I've never driven to one of the theme parks. We utilize somewhat some means of Disney transportation, but going to Disney Springs to drive into the parking garages, we were there on Black Friday. We were there around Christmas time. And it can't be easier. So, and I love that the different garages, depending on where you're trying to go at Disney Springs, you can park in the different garages and be in the the different and just empty out right into the different areas. I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's hard to get to Lime unless you're coming from off property, but I just park in Orange regardless. I never feel like yeah. I'm too far away from anything in Orange. Mm -hmm. I mean, before they did that, and this was, you know, this was years ago again, but. I was once leaving a concert that ended at 2 a.m. There were midnight movies and Pleasure Island all getting out at the same time. It took two and a half hours to get out of that parking lot. And yeah, this was. I don't doubt yeah. it. Do you remember fighting at the marketplace parking lot? That used yes. to be my least favorite thing is the the fist fights that would happen in the marketplace parking lot because no one wanted to park anywhere else. Everyone uh, wanted to just go to World of Disney, so they just try to park in that. That lot that's five feet wide. Yeah, it held like 30 cars and yeah, that's it. Yeah, and everybody's mm -hmm. like fighting each other there. I'm like, you know, if you go down the west side, like there's plenty of spaces. There was an it's incident. Uh, this happened uh, probably 98 when when Disney Quest actually had people there. West side just opened. So <laughs> Wait, there was a time when Disney Quest had people? When, was when it 1917? <laughs> When you could just pay to go in for a couple hours and it could cost you five, ten bucks. You had to crank all the games. But <laughs> so we're trying to get to a movie and we we see this parking spot. We're about to pull in. This is in the right in front of the old Virgin building. And some woman gets out of a car in the other lane, runs and stands in the spot we're trying to turn into. I hate when people do that. Oh no. And mm -mm. And she's yelling at us in Portuguese, so I'm, I'm not trying to stereotype. This was actually just being yelled at in Portuguese until my friend who was driving just kept nudging her out of the spot. Oh, so she... <laughs> man. That's what I would have done in fair. Yes. 18-year-old kids will do some stupid stuff. Well, not as stupid as stand in the middle of an empty parking space in a busy parking lot. Uh, that's but... That's been a huge improvement, though. That Every time I've gone there in the last couple of years, like since that first garage went up, it's been a million times better. Ashley, what do you think? I, th I agree. I think it's fantastic. I just remember going, we went to Disney Springs as they were still building, was before it, everything opened. The dark and it, Yes. <laughs> it took us like three hours just to get like from the casting building down to, and that's not far to get down into the parking lot. It was insanity. And I just remember cursing and thinking, nothing is going to make this any better. It's, it's always going to be awful. And then the parking garage is opened, and now it's like everybody said. It's, it's now easy easier than any of it's, the parks. Yes. Yeah. You just go, you park, you find your little green light, and you're good. I want a parking structure, not at Epcot, but no. at the other parks, I'd be fine with a parking structure. How about one of the worst places to park is trying to get to the Floridian? If you're not, yeah, that yeah, that lot across the going. street, my. That's the only one I always valet at when I was going with, uh, even with tables and the free valet. Like p parking contemporary, it's almost not worth the time to have to do it. Other places, but that it's just so far, and it always seems to be raining when I go there. Yeah. Or I think you could park over by the spa and get away with it. Used to be able to. The wedding pavilion is gated now. No. That's where we used to park back yeah. in the day. That was our that was our trick back then. The only time I, I didn't pay to park or valet over there was going to the spa. So that's the only now one. Now you remember. can just make a dining reservation and then modify it. <laughs> but I didn't tell you that. <laughs> anyway, I don't do that every day. No, it doesn't happen. Any, any more thoughts on parking? I think I think parking's as far as we're gonna get. So if there's anything more to be said about parking, it's don't do preferred. Really. I think that's the one thing also. No, preferred that's is silly. a waste of that's... money. That's the most ridiculous thing they've ever done. None of them are that much closer enough where it's really going to save your day no. or save you any problem. No, if it was going to be know what? Here's, valet or something. If you're going to park up a lot, maybe. Up. But then I say just get the express bus. 
No. Yeah, spend your money and, on the express bus. And you know yeah. what would be would be amazing is if that express bus could pick you up at the transportation and ticket center. Yeah, like or if at that least, was one of the or stops, at least you know take you to your car after a park has closed. Like and, if that if the, if the TTC was one of the stops where you could take an express bus from the parking lot into the Magic Kingdom, that would be worth oh wow thirty dollars. Yeah. It's great now. I love it. It's wonderful. Uh, Express bus. I hope it stays. I like it a lot. Um, unfortunately, we still got to talk about the tram and watercraft and buses and Other. Uber and Magical Express and taxis <laughs> and all sorts of things. You know what? We'll we'll just do that next week. I want to give this uh, a nice chunk of time next week and make sure we do it nice and early in the show next week. So first hour next week, I think we're gonna we're gonna get into this. And talk more about it. I think we got a good start, though. Thank you, illustrious panel. Hopefully, some of you will uh, join us for the post show shortly. And uh, Nick, I need to know who hates me. Oh, it's back. Who hates Tom now? We're going to start off with uh, one of your Magic Kingdom photo reports here. Brent wrote in, quote, Hid wars lights up and he speaks, but he also has movement using a handle on his back. Proofreading is hard. <laughs> uh, in your uh, mainstream electrical parade post, I think you had like a live stream of this going the final oh, uh, performance that night. Terrence oh, Blick man. wrote in. I saw five minutes, then it disappeared. Oh, LOL. Well, great. I am not me. going to download Periscope. Oh, I don't Joe. like that app. Nice try, but epic fail on your oh, part. <laughs> try to do something nice with you. What everybody was waiting for, a full show of Rivers of Light at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Show drastically cut was the headline. James Crowley wrote in, um... Was this proofread before you published it? First, there isn't a need. There isn't a need to use the word event twice in the first sentence. I wrote that at 10 30 at night on my phone. Everybody should come. I have no idea. I fixed it in the morning. No, what I can't tell is if he wrote there isn't a need twice to make fun of you, or that was his mistake. He probably I really just made that mistake. Ryan wrote in, it was only cut by three minutes. That is far hardly a drastic LOL, I swear. I'm going to stop using adjectives because apparently no <laughs> one likes adjectives. Click. I'm not allowed to have an opinion. Julio wrote in, WTF is with this clickbait title. Oh, my Joe. God, is your stri site struggling that much? Oh, it's three Joe. minutes. Drastic would be at least half cut back. January oh, was our biggest Joe. month in history. People have such Struggle. bad grammar. Mike S. wrote in, if the average wait time for an attraction was reduced from 18 minutes to 15 minutes, would the headline be, Disney drastically cuts wait times for customers? <laughs> exclamation, exclamation, question mark. Get it together, Tom wrote in. Tom, two words for you. Proof. Read. <laughs> Your articles are becoming increasingly filled with typos. You run a news site. Take a minute and reread your writing before you post. <laughs> WDWNT drastically exaggerates headlines again. Writes in, enough of the damn clickbait. <laughs> the site is becoming a joke. <laughs> joke. Yes, it's a joke. We'll see, we'll see some of the Star Wars ones for next week. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anti-theft devices installed at Mount Scares. Jared writes in, you guys have serious issues with never giving credit to those who actually break stories, yet crying when others don't credit you. Integrity check needed. What does that have to do with that story? No. That's not our end music. I thought we don't oh, need some DCA okay. here. Yeah, I'm all right with that. We're all the color. people really hated you on the Star Wars one, but we didn't leave enough time. I we know because it's, it's not a 2019 isn't a date. Basically, yeah, and it, lots of grammar errors. Proofread, proofread, Tom. It did not have errors. I looked over. And remember, kids, if this concludes your visit to the Walt Disney World Resort, we hope you had a wonderful time and return home safely. Good night, everybody.
Celebrating 50 years as Apopka's hometown station. 50 